I want to thank Brother uh, Jeff Hoffer and Holy Ghost Radio for inviting me to speak to you today. And uh, I would like to start off by telling you about a church service I was in a couple of weeks ago and in Jethro, Arkansas, Brother Weed is pastor of that church. And um, we had good, sir, good church service, had good music. Everything was good, good choir. But uh, I said to some of them after church, I said, do you all not have a harmonica in the church? They said, no, I don't, I don't believe we do. I said, but I'll tell you what, we have folks that sing bluegrass. Oh, I said, well, I'd like to hear some bluegrass. And so I had forgotten all about it. I was back in the back selling my books and uh, I had just got through and I think the last person that was looking over my books had walked away and two men in the church walked up with, looked like, matching guitars. And uh, they were Martin guitars and they were proudly displaying them and saying, telling me how old it was the one was and how old the other one was and of course I knew enough about Martin guitars to know that they were expensive and they were top of the line for musicians and so I was admiring them and so they said well we're going to sing for you and they started out singing on a song that I had never heard before. It was, ain't no wagon tracks around the old church anymore. And it automatically grabbed me. I loved it. <laughs> and it made me think, it made me go back. And, uh, but, uh, you see, uh, I don't want to go back, really. I don't want to go back to going to church in wagons. I like to, I like my Chrysler. I like to go back and I like to go in style. But uh, I have gone to church in a wagon before when I was, when I was a child, I, and I can remember coming home and being cold and a wagon hitting bumps. And my mother had put a quilt under me and one over me and was tr and, uh, just trying to stay warm. And uh, I don't want to go back, but I do would like to go back to what those tracks represent. Those tracks represent an awful lot, and very possibly it, it represents some things that we've lost or losing, uh, such as conviction. We don't, so many times it seems that we just have church. But we need that conviction that draws people, draws people, draws them towards the front, that they makes you feel something. Not long ago, I had preached and I had felt a certain amount of anointing and felt good about uh, the service. And I was walking out and... Uh, 
And all of a sudden, there was such a feeling that came right down on me. And I just turned around and went back towards the altar. It just drew me right back towards the altar. Conviction, uh, without conviction, we don't win people. We don't, they're not converted. Uh, even if we kind of coax them into coming, but when the conviction hits and they come on their own, crying and asking God to, to help them and forgive them. That, that's uh, I, I, the old ruts, the old tracks of the wagon. If, that, if it could just make us go back uh, to anointing, anointing, you, a preacher has to have anointing. Even a good testimony needs anointing and to really be have the results that it ought to. You know, I've noticed when you start talking about anointing, uh, some people will say, oh, you don't believe in education. That is one of the most goofy things that I... Uh, it, it's a liberal way of thinking and that's that's totally wrong uh, what what we're saying is education won't replace anointing in the pulpit but they want to use that to make you feel bad because they make you think that they want to think that you just don't believe in education. Why, well, a man would be a fool not to want to be as educated as as he could be. No one in their right mind wants to stay in ignorance, but neither does anyone in their right spiritual mind want to go to church and just have church without it being God approved and anointed. Well, anyway, that's enough on that, but I look back over at those imaginary tracks. Oh, I tell you what I forgot to tell you. The pastor the pastor of the church, Brother Weed, when he came in on that high tenor as those men were singing, it, it just added so much spice to it. I wish I could hear some of it today. You know, but people's got to love church. And folks back in those days had a love for the church. Everything was centered around the church. I remember hearing mom and dad the, the stories about them when they first got in the church. And of course, their churches that they left uh, took their names off of the roll because they had got the Holy Ghost. And uh, there was a camp meeting and they never had been to a camp meeting and they wanted to go to camp meeting so bad. and But they just had one pair of shoes that would, would be okay for the public. And, uh, well, <coughs> excuse me, you might wonder why they just had one pair of shoes and how would that work? Well, the shoes were uh, made in such a style that men could wear them or women could wear them. So my mother would go to the camp meeting one night and wear the shoes. And the next night she would stay home and dad would wear the shoes. And then the next night mom would go back and, and dad would go. 
They wanted to go. Now people go to special meetings and stuff, things if they, if they want to a lot of times. Maybe they choose to do something else instead of going to a special meeting. Uh, you know, also, there, there was another thing that uh, I, I wanted to talk to you about uh, along the lines of the sacrifices that my parents made. There was over at a camp meeting when they first received the Holy Ghost, and I think it was Oakdale, Louisiana, and the preachers were all there, and it was a daytime service, I'm sure about 10 o'clock, and they was sitting there enjoying the the word and all of a sudden chickens started running everywhere and they realized that uh, the chickens that they had pinned up had gotten out uh, and they found out later that an old mean boy had let them out and they left the service and started chasing down the chickens because uh, that was the only food that they was going to have. That's what they were going to eat. And they had to go get the chickens. But now we have all kinds of restaurants and we have a, we have a choice and uh, our biggest thing is make up our minds which one we want to go to. And we sit down and we're served and, and we have abundance left over and we we take a box home with us and, and to eat later in case we want it and so forth. And, and, but, but, but folks just really don't care as much about going to a camp meeting or church as much. Well, wagon tracks are a reminder of another day. It's a reminder of another day. For instance, revival. Revival back then. And I hesitate as an old man to talk much about the past, or I try not to because I know that's what people just expect me to do. Uh, but anyway, uh, revival, you know, revival is that time where God takes over and you walk in church and he surprises you and somebody stands up in the back and, 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 and he praises the Lord and cries out that you didn't expect to that doesn't normally do it. And then all of a sudden you see somebody walk in that no one even invited to come. And, and then you see the, the Holy Ghost and conviction, conviction getting on them and making them walk all the way from the back without a song without being coaxed. They come and crying and falling down in the altar. And, and, and that's such a wonderful time. Uh, if, if we could go back and look at those old tracks and let it make us think of and, and bring it this way, this world. You see, the world's problems are not going are not going to bring a revival. I used to think they would. I used to think when things got so hard on people that they'd just cry out to God and fill the churches. They're not going to. They're going to curse God. They're, they're going. To, they're not. Revival is not going. We've just had all kind of problems. Uh, lately, you know, and uh, 
quarantine and all of that and not be able to get things and the fear of it all. But nobody's crying out to God. They're just trying to work it out on their own. So it's not, the world's problems is not going to bring revival. What people have to do is live right. Just live right. Nobody's thinking about living right. They're thinking about, I don't mean everyone, but I'm the world in general is not thinking about living right. And uh, they, that's, that's just not on their agenda. And, and prayer, prayer. I, I remember uh, around our old country church, Camp 8, they called it, out in Louisiana. When you went to church, you see horses tied to the trees and wagons there, and maybe a car or two. And, and then you'd hear the men praying out in the woods and on one side, and the ladies, they, went in, they were in the woods on the other side, and you could hear that, that, that prayer meeting going and by the time they got in church, everybody knelt down. I was in a church the other day where instead of standing and praying, everybody knelt down. It was in Melville, Louisiana, Brother Ham's church. And it was just so refreshing. <laughs> to, I, I'm not sure I, my old bones would let me kneel down and get up right now, but, but it was such a nice moment to see everybody kneeling and praying. And that's the way they were out in the woods and then they'd come into church and they'd kneel down. And by the time they'd start singing and everybody getting in the spirit, you could just feel the Holy Ghost presence and people crying. I notice there's not many tears in church anymore. and uh, There's not. And, it seemed like people don't laugh in the spirit anymore. And they just get so excited and the Holy Ghost, it just, it produces a laugh. It, uh, uh, oh, we need, a, we need to go back and just, not, not try to go back, I don't, don't mean that, but go back in our mind and look at those old tracks around the church and uh, make ourselves read the Bible until we get hungry for, for to read it again. The more you read the Bible, the more you want to read the Bible. We, I love to see people still carry their Bibles to church and open them up and read along when the pastor's reading. Sometimes they probably know the scripture, they, and at least they could trust him with it. But they've got their own Bible, and that's theirs. And they, they know how to find the scriptures in their Bible. And, and they might even stop and underline and, and write down, Brother so-and-so preached this here on a such and such a night. And they'll tell each other, tell other people what the pastor preached that night. And it just all, church, church, church. And uh, as the song said, as the song said, ain't no wagon tracks around the old church anymore. Well, I don't, I don't say it that strong, but I do say we need to, all of us, I need to tighten up and do better. God bless you. Thank you for listening.